Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweater and In this tutorial, you are going to be learning frequency separation, screen retouching in just 10 minutes. So, spare 10 minutes of your time and you understand how to edit your images using frequency separation from the very start to the very end. And you can see this is the image before editing it. And this is, going to be, this is what we are going to be achieving by the end of this video tutorial before after. So, simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you are watching and you're not yet subscribed here to this channel. So I'll just come and uh, I delete the edited image. So what you have to understand about frequency separation, it is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into two layers. So it is going to get this image and it is going to basically divide it into two layers. So one layer is going to be containing the colors and the other is going to be containing the textures. So when you combine both the colors and textures, you end up with the same image. So that is what we're going to be separating from this very image which is the background layer so just come and press ctrl j on the keyboard if at all you're using windows then for mac it is command j so i'm just going to double click to name that to low frequency and i'm going to name this to high frequency so the low frequency layer contains the colors and this high frequency layer contains the textures so after doing that we're just going to come and hide this and select the low frequency layer so when you select the low frequency layer, we're just going to make sure to are remaining with only the colors in the low frequency layer. So just come right here to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. And when you reach this step, you have to take the radius all the way down. And you look for an area on the skin that has more skin textures than the rest of the skin. So for this case, just click anywhere on the skin and you can use these options to zoom in and zoom out. So I'm just going to use this as a reference point for the skin. And left click on the radius slider starting start taking up the radius up to a point whereby you're just starting to lose out on the textures in the image so depending on the amount of details that you have in your photo this radius may be different so the higher the radius the more textures you are going to remain with in the final image and the lower the radius value the less of the details are going to be remaining with in the skin so you have to look for that spot whereby you are just starting to lose out on the textures or details in the photo so this is the most important step when it comes to editing photos using frequency separation and when you mess up this step it means it's going to determine the textures that you are going to remain with in the final image so just look for that area where you are just starting to lose out on the details and stop at that point so just come and click ok so when you click OK, you're going to notice that the image is going to be looking a little bit blurry. So just come and now turn on the texture layer by activating it right there. So what we have to do, just come right here to image and come to apply image. So when you come apply image, it's going to open up this apply image window. So just come to where you see source, it is the name of the image. Then layer, select the low frequency layer. So for a 16-bit image, the blending has to be add. Then opacity 100%, preserve transparency and mask are not checked. The scale has to be 20 offset 0 and make sure you turn on the invert option. And you'll see the textures on this layer which is lacking colors. But if at all you have 8 bit right here or 8 right here, it means your image is 8 bit. The settings are going to be different. So select the low frequency layer for an 8 bit image. Then change the blend mode to subtract. The scale has to be 2. So just type in 2. And offset 128 and you'll have the options right here the invert option doesn't have to be turned on so mine is a 16-bit I'll just change the settings to 16-bit and click OK so just come the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way down to linear light and you'll get back the information in the image it was meant to be so just select both layers and press ctrl G on the keyboard put them in a group open up the group and select the low frequency layer and hide the high frequency layer so after hiding it just come under the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool so when you select the mixer brush tool if at all it is not under the brushes you can find the mixer brush tool down here so whichever tool you select in photoshop the settings are always going to display above here so with the mixer brush tool selected make sure the hardness is set to zero clean brush is selected because as we are brushing on the skin we want photoshop to automatically clean the brush for us make sure this second option is selected. The weight is 9, load 75, mix 90, flat 100%. So we have selected the low frequency layer right there. So anything is going to be blending or working on the skin. So if at all the brush is showing a, pl a plus icon, press the caps lock key on the keyboard. 
To increase or decrease on the size of the Mr. Brush tool, you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard. So, <coughs> how to apply the Mr. Brush tool? We simply left click and hold down and we blend a given area depending on the colors in that area. So, to work on another area, left click and mix that area. So, after mixing that area, you release the left click button and work on a new area just like that. So, mix colors that are looking alike. And where they're transitioning from one color to another, you have to mix that area differently by using a smaller brush. So just mix those areas just like that. Camp the chain area and mix just like that. So you have to follow the direction of the area you're trying to work on. So I'm just going to mix this area just like that. You can see it is moving in that direction. So I'll blend it in that direction and continue working and mixing those areas. So blend that area, blend each and every area. So you have to follow the way the, sh the face is shaped. So the neck is moving in an up down direction. So I'll move the brush in that direction and blend those colors. So the major point right here is to blend the transitions between the skin tones or a skin color of the model. So I'll reduce on the size and I work on this tiny area just like that. Mix those dark areas alone and mix right here on the armpit just like that come to the hand and also mix the bright area and mix these mid tones just like that to blend them and mix the fingers come to the knuckles right here and also mix those areas i think this is okay and it looks great so you can notice that as you're using this technique it tends to make the image look a little bit plastic but when we come and return on the texture layer, you can see that we have an edited image which is having texture. So that's the before, after, before, after. So after working on the skin color, the next thing is going to be perfecting the textures. So select the texture layer which is the high frequency layer and come and get the clone stamp tool. And now set it, make sure that is set to zero. The mode is no more past in the flat hundred percent. Make sure align is selected and current layer has been selected. And after doing that, just zoom into the image by using Ctrl plus on the keyboard. Or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. So how to remove a pimple or blemish, for example, this one right here. Hold down the Option key on the keyboard. And make sure the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to remove. So hold down the Option key on the keyboard. For Windows, it is alternate. And left click on a clean area near the blemish and release the Option key. Or you can release the alternate key on the keyboard and left click over the blemish tool. Replace that blemish with clean skin. So basically that is how you can remove the pimples or blemishes. So take your time as you are removing these pimples or blemishes because this contributes to over 80% of your retouched photo or your retouched portrait. So take your time and re remove all these blemishes and clean up uh, your images. So I'm just going to do a very quick job because i don't want the tutorial to be a lengthy one so we are just going to remove the imperfections on the hand just like that remove all these imperfections so just take your time as usual so zoom out by using command minus and you can see we are done removing the pimples or skin imperfections so you can see what i've been able to achieve right now so this is the before after before after so after editing your image, the next thing is basically going to be exporting or saving the image so it doesn't change in color when we post it on or print it out. So just come right here to File, Export, and come to Export As. So when you come to Export As, it's going to open up Export As window. Make sure the format is set to JPEG because this is supported by most social media platforms. And make sure the quality is set all the way to 7. So we want Photoshop to slightly sharpen the image for us. <coughs> as we are saving it so just come to resample click down and select by cubic sharper then we come these options down here one is convert srgb and also embed color profile so if at all you don't want the image to change in color when you post it or print it out make sure you check these two options and after that simply click on export and choose a location where you want to save your photo or your image and after that click save and it is going to automatically save your image so this is how you can easily understand frequency separation from the very start to the very end and if at all you have enjoyed this simply 
like this video and if at all you want to download the photo to follow along as you're trying to edit simply check the links in the description of this video Ronix from Ronix Photography thank for watching and see you in more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating